Point two is on the conic section ellipses. And just a reminder of the cones that are being cut to create these conic sections. So today we're looking at this first cone here where you see it sliced through at an angle. So instead of making the circle that you saw when we went horizontally, now at an angle it's creating that ellipse. Looks a little more like an oval than our regular circle shape. The Analytic definition of an ellipse is a set of all points in a plane whose distance from two fixed points in the plane, which are known as foci, have a constant sum. So we're going to again go to the GeoGebra site that we looked at previously. And on GeoGebra here, what we're going to do is what you see is a string and then our two fixed points. Remember how we said our two fixed points, which we're going to call the foci individually. Each one is called a focus point. So we have two focus points here. And the sum of the distance between those two fixed points is constant. So right now you see it says the total length of the string right here is 5.9. So I can move that around and I'll do that in just a little bit. Um, but what this means is that the total length of this string is 5.9. And you see where the pencil is. So this dot right here where the pencil is, is one point on our ellipse. And then what we're going to be able to do is to say, let's say I move this point. The string is the same length. Imagine that being a string taped onto the board. That string can not change in length, but what I can do is with this pencil here, I can move the string around. So let's say I move the string to right here. You see all those dots that were plotted? Every single dot that I have plotted so far has a total length of the string that's 5.9. If we look at this from the focus point to the pencil, pencil back to the focus point, that point is still 5.9. I can move my string right here. Now focus point to the pencil, pencil back to the focus point, that's still 5.9. So wherever I move this string, we're going to say this is still 5.9, still a distance of 5.9, 5.9. It's still a distance of 5.9 for the sum of those two segments, that string, as we move around. And as I go more slowly, you see it's making the solid line to create that ellipse. And when I moved it a little faster over here, you saw how it just created dots at individual points. And so that's that's how our ellipse is created. So we're taking those two fixed points known as the foci or each focus point, put a string in between them and now as I go a little more slowly you can see how that's going to fill in to create that ellipse. So here's our final picture of our ellipse here. Now, your ellipse can change what it looks like depending on the length of the string. So I can clear this ellipse right now and I can make my length of the string, let's say make it a little bit longer. Let's say we make it seven and we can just quickly look at the difference in that ellipse. Again, the distance from one focus point to the string, string back to the other focus point is gonna have me a constant sum of seven no matter where that's plotted. So as I go around, again, sum of seven for that string, sum of seven, sum of seven. So it looks pretty similar, but you can see how it's a little bit different shape for our ellipse here. Now it would also change shape of your ellipse depending on where you put those focus points. I don't have the option to move those focus points right now, but that would give us another thing to look at in terms of what the final shape of the ellipse would turn out to be. So I'm going to draw one more ellipse that we can use when we're done. I'm going to copy and paste it onto our notes so that we can fill in some of the attributes of an ellipse. So here we go around. I'll go a little more slowly. Again, length of that string is a constant six no matter where I'm at in that ellipse. And there we go. So that is how we create an ellipse. So going back to our definition of the ellipse, again, it's a set of all points in the plane whose distance from two fixed points in the plane, known as the foci, has a constant sum. So that constant sum is the important part for us to keep track of. And again, we were able to create that nicely using that GeoGebra app to be able to see how that would be created with a constant sum and look at a couple different variations of that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in some of the attributes that you want to know of an ellipse. We are going to start with an ellipse that has a center at 0, 0. 
And so we're going to assume that the center of this ellipse is at 0, 0. I'm going to label that right in here as well. And as we're labeling, um, keep in mind that eventually, much like the circle, we're going to look at what happens if we change the center to be in a different location. But to start, let's look at what happens when we're at a center of 0, 0, and then we'll adjust from there. So in the ellipse, some of the things that we need to know, if our center is at 0, 0, the distance to this vertex point is known as a. So if this total distance from the center to the vertex is A, that's going to make this coordinate A0. And then over here, that's going to be negative A0. Now the vertex points that they have listed here, you notice that this is the longer side of the ellipse. Obviously an ellipse has one longer side and then one shorter side if I go um, in the opposite direction vertically here. So this axis right here is longer and that's what's known as our major axis. And so the distance from the center to the major axis is A. Let's draw in that vertical line that's going to go through the center, but go through the shorter side. When I go through the shorter side, we call that our minor axis. And the distance from the center to the minor axis is known as B. So from the center, we're going to go down B and up B. Now, since we're going up and down, that's changing the y value instead of the x value here. So a distance of b to that minor axis, a distance of a to the major axis. And the other significant point that we had was this focus point. The focus point is a distance of c away. So we're going to call that c0 and negative c0. Now these are things that we would want you to memorize to know what the A, the B, and the C represent in the ellipse. It seems like a lot right now to keep track of, but as we move through it will become um, pretty standard for you to go through these pieces and actually um, won't be too complicated for us to keep track of all of those things. All right, now as we have the A, B, and C, a couple things about this ellipse that we want to make sure that we know. So in our ellipse, since A is the distance to the major axis, then that means the entire major axis length, it doesn't go on forever and ever. The major axis starts here at this vertex point, ends here at this vertex point. Um, so the entire major axis length is 2A. Sometimes in your textbook, you'll see it referred to as the semi-major axis. The semi-major axis then is only talking about half of that major axis. So if you see them refer to the semi-major axis, they're just talking from the center to the vertex. The entire major axis is from vertex point to vertex point. Likewise, for the minor axis, the minor axis goes from vertex to vertex here. So that entire axis length is 2B. If they refer to the semi-minor axis, then they're just talking about the B value from the center to one vertex point or the other. The foci, they are always on your major axis. So the foci are always on your major axis. There is no way that those C values can be on the same line as B. So C and A are always, always, always on the same line. The other thing that we know about an ellipse is that the A value is always, always, always bigger than the B value. Now that should kind of make sense since we just talked about circles because the A value is the distance to the major axis. What if A and B were the same? If it was the same distance horizontally as it was vertically, we would just end up with a circle, right? If A and B were the same, we would have a circle instead of an ellipse. So the A value always has to be bigger. Now another relationship that we'll see in a picture in a little bit is what we call the Pythagorean relation that has to do with the ellipses and that is that a squared minus b squared equals c squared. a squared minus b squared equals c squared. It looks kind of like your Pythagorean theorem except for we have subtraction in there instead of addition. So all of these are things that we want to know about our ellipses. One other formula that we're going to know about our ellipse, and then we'll show you the equation of the ellipse, is the eccentricity. The eccentricity of an ellipse, the main part that you need to know, E is C over 
a. So the c value, remember that was the distance to the focus, divided by the a value, that was the distance to the major axis vertex. When you divide those two, it gives you your eccentricity. What does that tell us? If you look at the two shapes down here, our ellipse, depending on the location of the foci, could look a little more circly, could look a lot more stretched out, depending on the value of E. Now remember that A, the distance to the vertex, would always be bigger than the C value, because the C value, the distance to the focus, is going to have to be inside of that ellipse. So it's no way that the A value is going to be any smaller than the C value. C is always smaller than A, and that means your eccentricity is always going to be smaller than 1. However, again, closer to 0 makes that ellipse look more like a circle. Closer to 1 makes that ellipse look a little more stretched out and flat. So that's what the eccentricity of the ellipse is going to tell us. Now, what's the equation of the ellipse? Let's start here on the left-hand side because this picture looks like that ellipse that we just have been drawing. The equation of the ellipse that, again, you're going to want to commit to memory, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. You should definitely see some similarities to circles, which is why we do the ellipse section immediately after we talk about the circles. Remember that in a circle we had x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x squared plus y squared equals r squared for our circle. For the ellipse, we still have the x squared plus the y squared. Always, always, always for an ellipse you're going to see that it's equal to 1. It has to be equal to 1. You're not going to see x squared over a squared, y squared over b squared equals 7 or something like that. It would always have to be equal to 1. The a squared and the b squared values come from the a and the b value of your major and your minor axis. When we have an ellipse where the horizontal axis is the major axis, that a value you notice is underneath the x. The x-axis has your major axis, and the a value is the larger value that we have there. So for an example, an equation that you might see for this ellipse might be something like x squared over 64 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. So you see the larger value underneath the x squared value, uh, and that's telling us then that the x-axis is the major axis. Now, what we haven't looked at in our pictures is what you see here on the right-hand side of the screen. This is showing us an ellipse where the major axis is going along the y-axis instead of along the x-axis. So we have a vertical major axis instead. So check out the differences that happen in this shape. Our center is still at 0, 0, and our definition of the ellipse said that A was the distance to the major axis. Well, if my major axis is going in the y direction, now it's still a distance of A to my major axis, but now A is going up. So you see how that's 0, A, changing the y value, instead of changing the x value that we did over here. 0, negative a. b is still the distance to the minor axis, but again, now we're moving in the x direction instead. So now you see b0 and negative b0. c, just like before, the c value is the distance to the focus, and the focus points are always on the major axis. So now I'm going up c and down c. So I don't want you to worry too much about Wait, is it C0 or 0C? But we really want you to commit to memory that from the center to the major axis vertex is a distance of A. And then you can think through, wait, is that changing the X or the Y? The distance from the center to the minor axis is B. And again, then think, am I moving to the right and left, or am I moving up and down to figure out how that impacts the coordinates? And C, again, being the distance to the focus points. Now check out how this equation is different. In your textbook, they write it this way, y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared equals 1. Still equal to 1, still this essentially x squared plus y squared part. The thing that I want you to notice is where the a value is, the distance to the major axis. y is my major axis, the y axis is my major axis, and you see the a value, the distance to the major axis, listed underneath the y. My personal preference, however, is not to write the y squared first, though you might see it that way. What I just want you to know is that if I write an equation for this ellipse, maybe I have x squared over 25 
plus y squared over 49 equals 1. The thing that you want to notice is that now the larger value is underneath the y squared and the smaller value is underneath the x squared. So a bigger number underneath the y value is going to indicate that the y axis is your major axis. A larger number underneath the x value is going to note to you that the x axis is your major axis. Now keep in mind, so far I've been writing perfect squares here. Nothing says that they have to be perfect squares either. So you could have an equation for your ellipse. It might be x squared over 19 plus y squared over 73 equals 1. We want you to recognize that as the standard form of our ellipse, x squared plus the y squared equals 1. You've got values down below. That means that your a value, again, a always the bigger number, a squared is 73, so a is the square root of 73, b is the square root of 19. So you might see some kind of non-perfect square numbers, and that's okay too as you move through writing out your equation of the ellipse.